All right, greetings, friends. Here I am again, talking about languages and language learning. It's been a long time since I talked about this topic. Okay. Now, for those, for the few of you who watch my videos, I'm gonna give a little update. All right. The previous videos I was making were in Seattle, Washington. Okay. Um, I was working on my master's degree in teaching English as a second language, basically TESOL, Applied Linguistics, okay? I finished that. I'm now living in Turkey and teaching English at a university, like in an English preparatory program, okay? So that's my background, okay? As some of you may know, I enjoy learning languages, okay? Now, the, the topic of this video is maintaining languages when you've learned many languages. People who speak many languages need to maintain those languages. This is the topic of this video, alright? I'd like to give a nice shout out to a wonderful polyglot who lives in Austria. I forget his name, okay? He recently uploaded a video in German about him talking about just various things about various aspects of language learning. I really enjoy this video. It has caused me to make this video. Okay, now um, and during the period of six years, where I did my two bachelor's and one master's degree, I took, I learned, I took classes for six languages, um, maybe seven, seven, seven languages, okay. These languages are Spanish, German, Russian, Turkish, Chinese, Croatian, and Filipino, okay. Of these languages, they all have varying abilities, okay. The two languages I feel most comfortable in are German and Spanish, okay. These I consider to be advanced level. My Russian's intermediate, my Turkish is like low intermediate. And currently, these are the four languages I'm currently maintaining, okay? Spanish and German, I'm trying to maintain them, doing like various listenings and readings on occasion. Um, and I'm actively trying to improve my Turkish, because I'm in Turkey, and actively trying to improve my Russian, okay? The other three languages, Mandarin Chinese, Serbo-Croatian and Tagalog are kind of on the back burner right now, okay? Because there's, a, you know, there's only so much time in a day, all right, for for various things. So I feel that these three languages, Serbo-Croatian has the potential to come into the forefront easily, okay? If I do a little bit of reading, a little bit of listening, I feel that this can come back quickly. Now Chinese, I only took one year at the university, so. Chinese has got a long way to go. I've got a pretty solid foundation, but you know, this is this is not easy. This this would be a long road ahead for any making progress in Chinese. Tagalog is very poor. Okay, my Tagalog right now is very poor. Um, so I just kind of want to talk about that, that's kind of my breakdown of my languages and where they stand. But I just kind of want to talk about how one goes about maintaining languages that they've learned. And basically, like, how do we do this? What's the importance of it? And so on. So, for me, at my point, I feel like I can work with about four languages, you know, like to some type of ability. In this Spanish, German, Russian, and Turkish, maybe Croatian, okay? But in order to do this, you need to be, you know, you need to have a high level of vocabulary and, you know, listening comprehension and speaking ability. And this is difficult, okay? It takes a lot of time. So if people are up, you know, if you want to be able to have a high level ability in 10 or 12 languages, you know, obviously, you need to be like 40 or 50 years old, okay? It just takes time, unless you're a lucky individual who was born into, like, a multilingual context, which I was not, okay? So in order to do this, one needs to maintain languages they've learned. And the way I've gone about this so far, was to, um, I would learn, lang I would concentrate on one language at a time. Like when I was in college, all the languages I've learned have started in a classroom context, okay? So when I was in college, I would focus on one language at a time from a classroom environment. But now, where I'm out of that environment, basically, in the real world, right? Like you have all these languages and all this time, and you need to, to organize this time to meet your goals. And my goals right now, are to maintain Spanish and German and bring up Turkish and Russian to a level equivalent of Spanish and German. I basically have four working languages. Okay. Um, so the way I do this 
is basically I've got a bunch of um, Turkish books. They're like bilingual Turkish English books from the um, publisher called Phono, which is a Turkish language learning company. And I just read these books for my Turkish reading and listening. I do the TV, and I have kind of a, a speaking partner that I that I that I practice with. So that's how I do Turkish. That's that's my main focus. Russian. Um, one of my coworkers is from Kazakhstan, and on occasion we'll speak Russian. And every night before I go to bed, I'll try to read maybe 10 or 15 minutes from a Russian reader. Okay, this is how I'm doing this. Uh, this is probably getting too long. I'll talk maybe for one or two more minutes. Okay, Spanish and German. I just do listening, listening practice and reading practice, just to keep like a like a passive, to keep my mind thinking in these languages. Okay. Now for the languages that, the three languages that are on the back burner, Chinese, Croatian, and Tagalog, I have to prioritize, and I have to think what's the importance, okay? It's possible I might go to China in the future, so this is why I try to work, I try to do some Chinese listening practice. The writing system is, you know, it's, it's, it's not my main, it's not my main focus, okay? I'm focusing on, I'm focusing on, um, like listening comprehension and speaking comprehension and vocabulary from a pinyin perspective, okay? But then I feel like Croatian, if I just, if I spent like a week on Croatian, like intensively, I feel like I could get back like that, you know what I mean? And I can still understand, because another one of my co-workers is from Croatia. Okay, let's finish this video. Let me say, one, when you learn many languages, you need to maintain these languages, okay? In order to do this, you need to prioritize and say, what are your goals with each of these languages? For me, Tagalog, I don't really see, I think a Filipino, I don't see a lot of goals for this language in the future. So I think this is a one that might get, end up getting kicked to the side, you know what I mean? And this is a decision you have to make as a multilingual person to say, hey, like, you know, do I want to pursue this language? Do I want to maintain this language? Or, do I don't, or am I going to let this language fade away? And unfortunately for me, for Tagalog, this language might end up fading away. Okay, because I've got another six that I want to really work with. Okay, tell me what you think.